Hi, second grade. It's Mrs. Sylvester here for your phonics lesson on Tuesday. I hope you're doing well, and I hope that you had a chance to watch Mrs. Sawden on Monday's phonics lesson. And we are reviewing our uh, pattern of inflected endings. So if you jump onto Google Slides, page slide number 27 and 28, uh, I put on two posters with a reminder for you to remember the rules. And we're just going to practice them again today. Um, one activity that I made, and you can do it at home, is um, last week I had taken some sticky notes, um, but today I just cut up some blank paper into little squares, and I wrote down some words that are verbs, so some actions, because we know that our inflected endings, we add, Mrs. Sodden mainly went over ed and ing, but we can also include adding so S, E, D, and I, and G. And with S, I know um, we've learned also that adding an S to a noun can make it mean more than one. It can make it into a plural noun, but when you add an S onto a verb, um, that's what we'll be working with today. And of course, adding the E, D makes the verb, the action, uh, have the meaning of it happening in the past, and the I, and G is the action going on, whether currently in the present or ongoing in the past or even into the future. So I just chose four different verbs and I know that with adding these inflected endings, there are some spelling changes. So I made one of my verbs have a magic E, so I can make sure I'm practicing how to add the ED and ING correctly with my proper spelling pattern. I made one verb have a short vowel, and one verb have um, two consonants after the vowel. And the vowel may be short, or it may be a special vowel sound um, that's not short or long. So if you can come up with four verbs, that's great. If not, you can just watch me and maybe practice afterwards. Um, also maybe think to the verb examples that you hopefully uh, already did on Monday and you could use those again. But I made them up and I can pick one and give it a try. Oh, today I am going to do something new that I don't think Mrs. Sodden did. And that is changing uh, the spelling to a verb that ends with the letter Y. So I'm glad that I picked this one first. And this word, of course, is try. So try um, can be right now in the present. So um, my friend tries hard, and so that would be adding the S. I can um, make this verb be in the past by adding ED. Yesterday, I tried hard to get my work done, and I can make it in the present, ongoing. Right now, I am trying to explain to you about our inflected endings. So let me see how the spelling changes when a verb ends with the word try. And I will make a note that this verb ends with a Y and before it comes a consonant. Um, we can maybe take time to look at when a uh, word ends with a Y but has a vowel before. So try, here is my base, or you can also call it the root word. Just making a quick chart on my board here. So try, when I add my S, I think you probably remember, what do you need to do the, to the Y? You change the Y to an I, so I keep the first part, but then the Y totally is changed or dropped or lost, and I make um, it into an I instead. And instead of just an S, I need to use an ES. So that is the proper way to spell the word tries. My friend tries hard, my mom tries hard, my brother tries hard. Um, so check for that spelling pattern. Now when I add my ED, just like when I added an S, I do need to change the Y again to an I and then add ED. So yesterday I tried hard on my work. And now when I add ING, um, right now I am trying or yesterday I was trying or tomorrow I will be trying. Um, it's a little funny, but we actually don't need to change it. So we know that we learned, oh, I'm going to run out of room here. Um, when you practiced adding the ED and ING yesterday, um, it was the same. So you just had to remember to either double a consonant or just add ED or ING. 
or drop the magic E. But when you have a verb that ends with a Y and has a consonant before the Y, um, for I and G, for some reason, the Y is okay with staying there. So trying, crying, um, those are the only two I can think of right now. Um, it will be different. I didn't make this on my word card, but if you have a, a verb that has a vowel before the Y, like a lot of our AY endings, you actually don't need to worry about changing it, so it's a little oddball because um, of the Y, or excuse me, the vowel before the Y. So plays, played, and playing, you can just add the S. So a little bonus practice, even though I hadn't planned on doing this one, and playing. But typically, most of our verbs that we have that end with a Y do have a consonant before. Um, and you need to change that Y to an I. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and erase this so I don't run out of space. My next card I have is the verb drop. Um, my son drops the ball. My son dropped the ball yesterday. And right now he is dropping the ball. So I hear the the vowel in the word drop is a short vowel. It makes the ah, 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 short O sound. So even though with my base word, it only has one letter P, when I add an S, remember the rule for adding an S is you just add it. You don't even have to think about it. If it's a verb, just add an S, unless again, it's the verb that ends with a Y. Um, but then when we have our ED and ING ending, that's when we need to remember to double that consonant. That will keep our vowel short. So even though drop only ends with one letter P, I double it. That means give it a second consonant and then add ED. Dropped. And same for my ING. Okay. How about my next word card? I have my verb bake. And I see that bake ends with a magic E. So this is how I spell my base or my root word. And the rule on adding an S is you just have to add it. So keep it. And this can be a little tricky sometimes. It looks like, oh, um, when we get into our Plural nouns, we think about the ES, but right, or, or even with our, um, yeah, our plural nouns, but it is the magic E, and then we're just adding S. Now, here with adding our ED, like yesterday I baked a cake, we know it would be very silly to keep that magic E on the, our base word bake. So sometimes I like to draw a line arrow through it to remind myself to drop it. And I've heard many students before, they think that this E is kind of doing double duty. Not only is it making our A say the long A sound, but it's also working as our inflected ending. So kind of a, a um, double job for that E there, but we certainly don't need two E's. So we drop the first E in our base word, which was our magic E or silent E. And here is where I see most students get that spelled um, spelling correct. However, I see a lot of students forget the rule and keep the magic E when they add ING. So a lot of our verbs have a magic E, but before you add ING, you need to drop it. So that would be the wrong spelling. So let me go ahead and spell it the correct way. So it seems strange, but when I need to spell the verb baking, don't use your magic E, drop it before you add ING. So it is dropped in both adding the ED and ING, but you might think of how you can still at least see it with the ED. All right, and I have one more, and this is the example of where I do have a verb that has a short vowel, but because I have two consonants already, it's a special vowel pattern with um, two, two L's afterwards, I don't need to double it. It's already doubled in the spelling. Um, a lot of other verbs that have two consonants after their short vowel would be other consonant blends um, like ST or MP, um, and you don't need to 
double it if there's already two consonants. So for yell, I might say, my dad yells when it's time for me to come inside, calling my name. And yesterday I yelled when I fell and hurt my foot. So I, I still have my two L's, part of the base word. And right now I am not yelling, but hopefully speaking in a strong speaker voice so you can hear me well. So try those. Um, again, there's two main rules to remember. Today I added on the rule that we have learned just about changing the Y to an I before you add an S or an ED, but you can keep it when you add the ING. So it's a little oddball, tricky one. And Google Slides 27 and 28 remind you about those rules. Um, and then jumping down a couple slides are some little chants. And that just means kind of a rhyme for you to hopefully remember those rules as well. Um, for your practice today, similar to yesterday, and just like our activity, you have a base word, and you then need to practice either writing on a piece of paper or a board, adding the S, E, D, and I, and G. So it's very important to learn our spelling patterns and to practice so we can all be our super spellers in second grade. So thank you for your hard work and keep it up. See you soon. Bye.